Hey everybody, it's Ian from UKEartswork.info here today with something a little bit different. I'm going to talk to you about enforcement versus the law. <laughs> it's not a new TV series, honestly. Uh, not a new crimin criminal uh, investigation series or anything. Maybe it is. <clears throat> the deal is this. Over the last few months, and in particular the last few weeks, I've seen a lot of stuff on social media from crew members in particular, but also bands, getting a little bit confused about one thing. And it's this, everything that we give you here on the channel and everything at ukeartswork.info and everything that you see on the MU websites, the BEC2 websites, the ISM websites and the official websites is all about the law, the legislation, the regulations. In reality, what you're supposed to do if you're gonna follow all the rules. Enforcement, however, is where people, customs officials, visa officials, immigration officials, etc., um, agents of the state, in wherever you're going, in either direction, will enforce that law. I'm seeing lots and lots of posts saying, oh, I just go through with um, a load of gear in the back of the van or in the car or whatever. I never declare it or haven't declared it. I've always got one way with it. Um, Oh, I've been in front of French customs officials, German customs officials, British customs officials, and they just go, oh, never mind, off you go, away you go. Um, I know as a UKVI registered sponsor, that means I can give work permit, certificates of sponsorship and give advice on visas, that even coming into the UK, we have immigration officers waving people through when they shouldn't. So that's enforcement. The problem is, if you're caught and stopped and you're not abiding by the regulations, there are a range of penalties that you're gonna to need to think about if they don't just let you off. And those penalties can be quite severe and serious. I'm not trying to scare anybody, I'm just telling you the truth. Now we've all, I've worked in the music industry and creative arts industries for around 35 years. I've been across borders many, many times. And I, like you, know that it's very irregular about how it's enforced. I also know that's the same is true for things like visas, etc. Shouldn't be, but anyway, it's true. The problem with all of this is as more and more regulations come in post-Brexit, in and out of the EU, UK, we have to think about a new reality. We've been used for many years, 30, 40 years, being able to just go through, not quite that long, be able to go through the borders and no hassles. No regulations are going to impose serious penalties on us. I'll give you an example. By the way, the EU is a unitary area for goods, etc., which means something, things like carnets are required as a EU-wide external border uh, thing if you decide to go with one. The same is true for goods for sale, etc., etc., etc. Which is why, for example, the EU has a top level of 1,000 euros for bringing in goods for simple declarations. The UK has 1,500 pounds. Totally different. So it confuses people. However, coming forward over the next um, few months, next year or so, we also have something called ETIAS coming in. That's the European Transit and Information System. I think, <laughs> I can't remember exactly, but that's the thing where you have to pre-authorize your entry into Schengen as a third country national. Um, and it could potentially flag any criminal um, uh, penalties that you've had in the past related to, for example, the Schengen border. This is related to your 90 and 180 days allowance for being in the Schengen area. ETIAS, which was coming in well before Brexit, got nothing to do with anything else, and if UK was still a member of the EU, you would be exempt from the need to register for ETIAS. So you walk towards the barriers or whatever, they have facial recognition technology coming in by the end of the year called EES. And if you're flagged, you might get stopped. So if you have a criminal record or something. Under French customs law, it's quite unique, well, mostly unique, I think. I don't know of any other. French customs law is very specific in that there are no civil penalties or no civil um, regulations related to customs law infringements. It means that 
every infringement potentially can generate a criminal record. It's actually not true for all of the stages. If it's a really minor infringement, as I know um, a couple of people recently got stopped for not, not giving information about ownership of musical instruments and got a small fine, we found on talking to the French authorities, no, that won't be registered and logged. Will it all come together? Will it stop us traveling if we've got minor problems or serious customs um, infringement? Who knows? Uh, but potentially it could. I'm not trying to freak anyone out here, but I'm just trying to give you the realities. Enforcement, are they going to stop you? Are they just going to wave you through? Are you going to get away with it? Yeah, maybe. Maybe a lot of the time that will happen. Um, it's not the advice we ever give, um, either myself or MU, back to ISM, or I have to state very clearly, UKEartsWork.info are a group of professionals that have worked in the industry for many, many years. And we're not saying you have to do these things. We're telling you the reality of what the legislation says. And it's ever changing. Um, and you'll see another video that I'm going to put out today as well on a good piece of good news. Your Oton will have finally given in and said if you're carrying, uh, if you're in a van with a carne, you no longer have to register as freight going through the tunnel. Yes, result, which means it's cheaper. Great. We don't know about the ferries yet. So anyway, what I'm trying to say, enforcement versus the law. Please remember that all we're trying to give you is fact check, clear information. Sorry if this is a bit of a long video today, but it is really, really important everyone understands the realities of what we're talking about now post-Brexit. Many of us don't think it was a good idea. <laughs> That's an understatement of the decade of the century of the millennium. Um, but what the information I give you here is not um, fighting that battle. We have to deal with a new reality. We have to make it work as best we can until things change. And we all hope that things will change to make things better. So here you go, guys. Um, I hope that hasn't been of use to you. Don't get freaked out about the Etias thing. Um, when you apply for it, it, you're allowed it for three years. It just, it might flag you if you've got a customs infringement, a serious one, for example. We don't really know how it's all going to link together with the um, back systems for entry and uh, exit of the Schengen area or immigration, temporary immigration is what it basically is. Um, if you've got any questions, by all means, drop me a line, uh, drop me a DM or, um, yeah, there you go. So stay well, stay safe, stay Tory. And I said stay touring, by the way, not Tory. God, I hope no one misheard that. Um, and I uh, hope you're all safe and well. That's for me today, Ian Smith from UKEartsWork.info on the YouTube channel. Please do subscribe. Lots more information coming as we go forward to make everyone's lives hopefully a bit easier with clear, fact-checked information. Bye for now. Sorry for the long video.